to save the Iranian nuclear deal. Trita Parsi is calling on Joe Biden to consider reestablishing diplomatic ties with the country despite Trump's frayed relations with that country. Executive, Executive Vice President of the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft and Georgetown Professor Trita Parsi joins us now to discuss why President-elect Joe Biden might want to do a 180 on relations with Iran. So great to see you, sir. Good to see you, sir. Um, can you just lay out for folks who maybe haven't followed it as closely what the dynamic has been between the Trump administration and Iran and how you would like the Biden administration to approach things differently? Sure. Yeah. So the Trump administration walked out of the nuclear deal uh, that was signed back in 2015 and have reimposed sanctions and then added a whole new set of sanctions, maximum pressure, they call it. Uh, and ostensibly, they've said that it's been in order to push the Iranians to come back to the negotiating table in order to negotiate a better deal, a deal that Trump put his signature on. The opposite has happened, however. As the U.S. has pulled out, tensions have increased. The Iranians have reduced their commitments to the nuclear deal, and they are now 12 times, they have 12 times the amount of low and rich uranium that they were allowed to have during the deal. Uh, and they have advanced new research, et cetera. So they're advancing their nuclear program exactly as people predicted they would do when Trump pulled out. And on at least two occasions, the United States and Iran were on the brink of war as a result of this policy. Mm -hmm. Biden's coming in. He's saying that he wants to uh, uh, resurrect the deal. He wants to go back into the deal. His team has been criticizing Trump's withdrawal. They have been calling the maximum pressure a failure. So now the question is, how will they proceed? Will they make the right moves to make sure that they can resurrect the deal? And the argument I'm making in foreign affairs is that the experience of the last couple of years have shown us that if we want this deal to not only be resurrected, but we want it to be durable, then we also need to have a broader improvement of relations between the United States and Iran, because we cannot have the expectation that an arms control agreement can survive if the two countries at the same time are at each other's throats. Right, and Dr. Parsi, I know that you had laid out this scenario before. Lay out the timeline. I understand it's very tight, given the Iranian elections, given inauguration, and all of that. How quickly would Biden have to act in order to get back into the deal? I think he would have to move quite quickly, at least with some of the signaling, because the Iranians are having their elections in, in June of next year. Uh, Biden's gonna come in, he has tons of other issues that he needs to address. We've already seen that he said that he's gonna do quite a few executive orders on day one. But if he misses that window between January and June in order to make sure that both sides go back into the deal, then my fear is that the window will close altogether because there's a very high likelihood that the next Iranian president is gonna be someone who's gonna run, run on a platform opposing not just the JCPOA, but the very idea of diplomacy with the United States because of the experience that the Iranians have had in the last few years. Mm. Yeah. Well, with that being said, is there an openness right now for, from the Iranians to get back in and re-engage in this deal? There is. There is an openness. And I think there's an openness from the Biden team as well. I think what the challenge here is, uh, first of all, is that what would the mechanics be? Um, you know, would the Iranians have to do their measures first and reduce their stockpile before the U.S. were to go back in? What do we do with all of these new sanctions that have been imposed that are not related to the nuclear program, but nevertheless is making the value of sanctions relief within the deal somewhat useless? Um, and uh, things of that nature and making sure that the communications is there uh, in order to make sure that both sides know and have full confidence in what the other side's intent is. This is part of the reason I think it would be very important for the Biden administration to start signaling quite clearly very soon what their intent is and that perhaps their intent is beyond just a nuclear deal, that they actually believe that it is now time to do something to make sure that this 40-year enmity between the United States and Iran uh, is overturned. It doesn't mean that the two countries will become allies. It doesn't mean that the U.S. would become enemies with Saudi Arabia uh, and Israel and others. But just to say, you know, 40 years of enmity between the United States and Iran, has it served U.S. national interest? If it has not, what's the problem of just signaling we would like to put this behind us? Mm -hmm. and, and Dr. Parsi, just generally, the world has changed um, in the last four years. How is that going to impact everything? Now, the Iran deal, we have these deals with the UAE and the Gulf and the U.S. relationship with the Gulf countries is, you know, a lot closer. How do you expect all of that to play out in a Joe Biden administration? 
Well, it, it's going to complicate matters because we're on the one hand expecting that the Iranians will go back into a deal that reduces their military options, which I think is the right thing to do. We should not have nuclear weapons in Iran. We should not have nuclear weapons in the region at all. But at the same time, are we going to go forward with these arms sales that is giving the UAE and other countries uh, some of the most advanced weaponry uh, uh, that the United States has? That imbalance of power in and of itself, I think, is going to create a strategic context in which the desire and the demand on the Iranian side to continue to uphold the deal is going to start to be eroded, in addition to all of the other things that have happened. And that's the problem. We actually want that both sides feel like, yes, this is a good deal. We want to keep it. If we don't have that scenario, then the deal is going to be fragile. And finally, Dr. Parsi, um, what is your view of some of the Secretary of State potential picks that have been floated? Susan Rice is among them, Tony Blinken, I believe, Senator Chris Coons, uh, I think Michelle Flournoy was another one who was floated. Um, what's your view of the list that we're seeing taking shape so far? Um, what I think is most important in this scenario right now is that the Biden team should recognize that they have an opportunity to actually do some more profound changes and reorientation of American foreign policy. If they don't bring in people that are willing to think way outside of the box and recognize that we live in a very different world. I mean, we have one 9-11 amount of American deaths every three days and $800 billion to the Pentagon has done absolutely nothing to be able to prevent that. If we then just continue our foreign policy as if nothing has happened, then we're missing a major opportunity. And I suspect it would also lead to the failure of the foreign policy of the Biden team. Yeah. I think that's very well said. Dr. Parsi, always great to have you. Great to see you, sir. Thank you, sir. We'll have more rising for you after this.